All right, and let's go like that, and here we go. So, Dr. Samia Harb, let's see if everybody else was capable of coming in. Alhamdulillah, we finally got this start working. All right, so... Okay, we also need to send this to our telegram as well. Sorry, guys, we were behind. Here we go. Oops. All right, I think we could start. Um, so we had, uh, is, is anybody there in the background, Samia, to help you admit people? Um, in, in order to read the, the questions? So to, no, to not, not in order to read the questions, but in order to admit people when they come in. Um, so, no, no, there's passwords. There's passwords. Oh, there's a there's password for it? Okay. Okay, so. This is it for Quran. Because this, I sent, I sent this link for you. Okay. Because it has a password and it's easy for everybody to come in. Okay, good. So here we go. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Everyone, this is a very special meeting. This sister is so dear to me that she's one of the most important people that inspired me during my college years, I must admit. You know, you will have so many professors when you study Sharia, you'll have so many professors out there, but you usually you usually would think it's the professors that are going to inspire you always but this time it's actually one very important figure that i came across during my sharia years all right so during my sharia studying um she happened to come and visit us she's older than me she came to visit us in in the sharia college and when she came in um she had this charisma there was this you know, there was this 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 light that was just attracting everybody to her. This is Dr. Samia Harb. At the time, she was just known as Samia Harb. Very energetic. And whenever she is there, you could see everyone just drawn to her. And she knows no challenge. And she will just tell you, I can see you. And she really can despite the disability but she can see you she can hear you she can sense you she goes beyond what you normally think seeing means she sees beyond what you normally see this is Dr. Samia Harb. She was capable of getting the ijazas in 10 qiraat, was capable in giving in getting a PhD in Islamic studies, and was capable in those moments, you guys. Just imagine and picture this. We would be in Al Masjid Al Aqsa praying Salat al Taraweeh, and we would start out with just five people for Salat al Taraweeh. And with her voice, we would be able to gather almost 200 people, 200 women right behind her. And her voice would be so loud and clear and so beautiful to touch each and every single one of us's hearts. When she was reading the Quran, she wasn't just reading the Quran. You could feel the words really going into your heart, targeting right into your heart. That was was Dr. Samia Harb. No one I can ever think of was as powerful, as strong, as vibrant, as inspirational as Dr. Samia Harb. And believe me, I am not exaggerating. When you would be around this lady, you would just feel that this woman is just beyond, beyond any other woman in her capacity, in her ability, in her strength, like no one, like no one I had ever seen. Dr. Samia Harb, I know you might think that I overpraised you, but Rabbi Yahfadik, you are one of these women that will always be in my mind with this inspirational personality. Dr. Samia Harb, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Really, I don't know what to say after this uh, uh, 
this uh, thing that you said about me and it's kind of you thank you very much i hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me better than you think inshallah and accept our deeds inshallah rabbil alameen and make us meet in jannah al-firdaus Allah yahfadik ya Rabbi. So tell us about you, um, Dr. Samia. Tell us about you, like, where were you born? Um, when w- when uh, did you start learning? Just tell us about you. First of all, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, in our time, good evening. <laughs> um, I'm happy to be with you in this nice uh, in this nice afternoon, and inshallah, uh, Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us ikhlas, give us exception, inshallah, Rabbul Alameen, and give us um, what we, what we, what, what, what yani the abilities to, 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 to uh, send or to, to, to deliver this risala, this, uh, this, um, Message. This khitab, this speech from Allah, this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, my name is Samia Ahib Harb from Ramallah, Palestine, from a village called Betillo. It's a village uh, in the uh, western, uh, in the northern west of uh, uh, Ramallah. Uh, I born in my village, in my house. Um, I uh, went to uh, a special school, a private school for blinds in Al-Qabas School uh, for Disabilities in Ramallah uh, since I was two years and a half. Uh, I finished my high school, uh, then I went to uh, Al-Quds University. I finished uh, my bachelor degree in Da'wa wa Usul Deen, the rules of, uh, of our uh, holy religion and the rules of Da'wa, of how to invite people to Islam and how to deliver the message for those people who needs to know about Islam. Then I worked in Awqaf Ministry uh, in Palestine, the uh, Ramallah department uh, for 10 years after my bachelor's. Then I went to Jordan University in order to uh, do my master's. During my master's, I have my, uh, Alhamdulillah, I I finished memorizing uh, the Holy Quran in uh, 1997. Uh, then uh, I started teaching Quran for children, for women, during my work. I worked as Da'ya in uh, Awqaf Ministry and I was uh, in the committee of uh, uh, evaluating or assess- assessing people who memorize Quran and want to uh, compete in the competitions uh, uh, locally and internationally. Uh, I went to Jordan University in order to finish my master's. I finished my master's in uh, explanation Quran, tafsir wa ulum al Quran, yani the sciences of Quran and tafsir, uh, from nine, from uh, twenty uh, uh, two thousand and six till two thousand and eight. Uh, during this uh, this period, alhamdulillah, I could uh, I could get my first senate, my first theory that connect me with uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in uh, Riwayat Hafs on Asim. I went to Syria and I finished my uh, Sanad. Uh, it's, it was by heart. I read the, the Quran and I, ha- I had my Sanad uh, from uh, Sheikh Muhammad al-Hanafi. It's the a student of uh, Sheikh Bakr Tarabishi. And ha- I had my Sanad uh, from Bakr Tarabishi. Uh, it, uh, he was the highest Sanad in the word. The so, um, uh, 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 do you mind, Dr. Samia Harb? So, what the Senad is, so she's basically speaking about the chain of narrations. Remember, there are chain of narrations when we're talking about the Quran, there's the oral transmission, and she's talking about the oral transmission where there's a chain of narration, and she's talking about a chain of narration that is considered closest to the Prophet. Sallam. So, when we're talking about a high Senad, or we're talking about the Senad where it is. Um, it is probably the most, uh, let's just call it the most, uh, the closest to the Prophet Sallam, and that's what she's actually talking about right now. That she actually traveled to Syria in order to get the highest level of the highest level of connecting with the Prophet Sallam in terms of the number of different chain of narration. In other words, the number of different people within the chain of narration. Sorry about that, Dr. Samia. Go ahead. Uh, 
short sonnet. Uh, there you go. I finished my master's. My uh, my master my master's uh, research was about the things that make you uh, or that prevent you from the real understanding of the Holy Quran. Uh, for example, uh, some uh, some previous yeah, when you read the Quran with previous thoughts uh, some um, uh, the, the israeliyat yani the, the the things that uh, we had from ahl from ahl kitab uh, yani a lot of things that make it difficult for us yani the weakness in arabic for example this was my uh, research in masters then i uh, went back to palestine in order to finish my work um, i started my my uh, uh, phd the uh, in 19 in 2013 uh, in al uh, qiraat al the recitations of the the sciences of recitations the holy quran who علم القراءات القرآنية it uh, talks about or uh, it uh, we, we we study about uh, the uh, 10 qiraat al 10 al qiraat al 10 and um, the, the science belongs to it uh, belong to it, uh, for example, tafsir, uh, la, uh, Arabic language, uh, fiqh, like this. But we study all of the sciences, uh, uh, all, all of the sciences, depending on the methods of reading Quran. Yani, for example, when you say, مثلا, in fiqh, uh, what's the what's the effect on fiqh, for example? What's the effect on fiqh, What's the effect on lugha? What's the effect on tafsir of Quran? This is what I studied. Alhamdulillah, during my PhD, I finished my PhD in uh, uh, 2018. Alhamdulillah, I had my uh, senates in the 10th qira'ah, kubra and sughra. Kubra, yani from tayyibatun nashr, and sughra from ashatibi and ad-durra. Uh, those uh, uh, senates, uh, those series, connects me to uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to Jibreel, then to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, now I'm working in serving this uh, science, uh, Al-Quran wa Ulumu, Tafsir, Qiraat al Qur'aniya, Teaching Tajweed, and so on, Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, uh, by the way, um, let me just... In, I got married in uh, 2016 from a blind people from Kenya, a blind person from Kenya. We met in Turkey, and Alhamdulillah, now I, uh, I'm, I'm in Jordan. I'm in Amman. Um, so, what is your husband doing? So, is he is he originally uh, originally from uh, Kenya? Yeah, he, he is from Kenya. And he was born in Kenya, but the, his roots from India. Oh, so he's originally Indian, and I believe yes. he's also working on his PhD in Islamic studies. Am I right? No. Uh, he studied uh, Islamic studies uh, as a diploma from South Africa. Then he's, uh, he, when he came to Jordan, he he wants to study Arabic language, was be, but because his Arabic was weak, he started studying English literature. Then when he finished, alhamdulillah, he's studying now Arabic language in Jordan University. MashaAllah, good job, good job, good job. So, Dr. Samia, a number of different questions. When did you actually start memorizing the Qur'an? Because I know you you, you got the ijazah later, but when did you start memorizing? And how was that How was that really like for somebody that is blind? You know, was somebody reading it for you? How was it like? How did you do it? Uh, you know, when I was at school uh, during, uh, you can say from... Uh, uh, 1987 uh, or 89, uh, I think, uh, I was uh, in the ninth grade, uh, 1989. Uh, we have one mushaf in Braille, you know, I use Braille, uh, Braille way in writing, in reading and writing. Uh, then we have one mushaf and, uh, you know, because we depend on touching, uh, the mushaf was very old and I couldn't uh, differentiate between some letters because you know we depend on six dots in the cell so if there's a, a, any dot uh, yani different uh, the, the word affects so um, when I started memorizing Surah Al-Baqarah I, f- I found it difficult for me because I couldn't read well and I haven't a tape recorder in order to help me in reading and yani when, I, when I listen I can read 
uh, but I, I tried it to I tried to uh, to choose the the clearer one. So I started from Juz Amma. When I finished my high school in 1992, Alhamdulillah, I was memorizing four Juz. When I uh, went to the university, I have to, you know, Sister Aisha, I have to, uh, we, we have to uh, to make or uh, to do uh, eight Juz as a request of graduation. So Alhamdulillah, I made, uh, I, I did my, my exams in, on those Juz uh, during the first and second year. Then uh, I started memorizing. Uh, when I finished my university, I had in my heart 10 juices. And dur during one year, alhamdulillah, I could finish uh, the, uh, memorizing the Holy Quran. I was saving money in order to buy uh, the Mus'haf. You know, it's, it was uh, 15 volumes in Braille. And uh, it, it cost, uh, you can say, $170. And one hundred seventy dollars in the, in the nineteenth, yeah, I mean, between nineteen ninety two and nineteen ninety six, it was a very great, uh, a, a very expensive, yeah, very expensive. So when my father gave me my uh, my uh, the money, and I spent half, and I um, I I could, alhamdulillah, get the mushaf during uh, you know six months, like. Yeah, so when were you... I save, I buy. When I save, I buy one volume, buy one volume, and it helps me, alhamdulillah, to memorize because it was clearer than the Mus'haf. Because, you know, I, I can't uh, depend on listening only. I have to read. Alhamdulillah, uh, in uh, uh, August 1997, I finished memorizing the Holy Quran, alhamdulillah, by Ruayat Hafsa Ma'azir. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So... When, how do you keep yourself motivated? You know, it's it's definitely a challenge, you know, whether it's the Braille or whether it's, you know, keeping yourself motivated to make sure that you're not making a mistake. And of course, it's really hard for you to, you know, get access to transportation that easy like somebody else would. How did you keep yourself motivated despite all the challenges? You know, um, uh, the desire the desire in my heart and uh, yani, I, I want to, to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a pure heart and in a, in, in a, a good credit. So this was uh, motivating me all time. Plus, uh, my father, rahimahullah, uh, yani, was encouraging me a lot, my, uh, my, my friends. Uh, I was uh, going to uh, Masjid al-Aqsa from time to time and uh, sh yani participate with the competitions there. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Yani. But the, first, the, the, the most important motivation is uh, that I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my motivation. Allah, 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 mashallah. Samia, let me ask you another question. Like, well, you were able to find a braille for the Qur'an. But what about when you were studying Islamic studies? I mean, I just put some of the pictures up there in the background. Um, some of the professors that I know um, have taught you. Those are some of them, not all of them, um, at least from Kulit al Da'u Usul al Deen. Um, what about the Islamic studies books? Like, I'm sure you didn't have a braille for each and every single Islamic studies book. What did yes. you do for that? You know, uh... Jazakumullah khairan, my, my professors allowed me to record the lectures. Then I go back home and uh, summarize the, lecture, the lectures on Braille. Uh, then um, I depend, uh, and you know, I, I was helping my colleagues, my sighted colleagues, because I, uh, you know, I, I listened to the lecture more than once in order to write it in a good language. So I, uh, I, I can help them to uh, read, to, to understand those lectures. Plus, I was depending on my friends to read for me, especially when the professor decide that you have you have to make exam, uh, you have to read this book in order to make the exam without explaining, without lecture. So I uh, I try to uh, have a, a help from my colleagues, and sometimes I go to persons out of the university in order to read for me. Mashallah, this is amazing. Well, here's let me ask you another question. So day to day. What were the most important struggles as a blind person in studying and learning Islam other than other than 
you know, needing, probably needing someone to read for you. How did you overcome those struggles? Uh, you know, every everything when you when you when you want to to make in jazz, when you want to achieve anything in your life, you have to to you have to uh, exceed a lot of challenges. You have to you have to challenge yourself first, and you have to, to challenge your you, to challenge your circumstances. Um, first of all, yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes, yeah, alhamdulillah, I have a good memory, and I depend on what I hear. On the lecture, during the lectures, um, uh, sometimes I feel myself uh, lazy. I feel myself that, yani, almost I haven't anything to do. Yani, once I I have exam, and yani, you know, yani, a lot of students, my colleagues in the in the in the in the residence in the hostel, yani, like in, in the night of the exam, likes to depend on themselves in studying, and they can't share. With uh, studying with anybody, so I have the, the the course is very very big, and I want to read it all. So I uh, I was looking for a person to read for me. I went to visit uh, one of uh, they, they they recommended a person from Beth Hanina, Sister Aisha. I went to her house, and suddenly she received this. Ya Allah, it was a very very difficult night. And I was burning. Tomorrow is the exam at eight o'clock, and I went to her house, and I exceeded the laws, <laughs> the laws of the hostel that uh, you are not allowed to sleep out of the hostel. But uh, and I slept in order to study, and he received guests. She was very, very ashamed from me. Jazakallah khairan. But alhamdulillah, I made dua, and it was nahu, and I have, yani, alhamdulillah, background. Uh, of this, yani, alhamdulillah, I could yani, exceed the exam. In a lot of exams, I couldn't do well because I, I didn't find any anybody to read for me. Oh. But alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I graduated. Uh, yani, uh, in, uh, my degree was excellent, alhamdulillah. Um, did you always want to study Quran and Islam or did you, at one point in your life, you wish that you would study something else? What were, what was the most thing uh, that you really wanted to study or t- tell me about that. When I, was young, when I was young, in the beginning of my life, I was uh, I, I wanted to study languages, uh, and I, I wanted to study something that uh, that yeah, I mean, that make me challenge my uh, my blindness. Uh, but uh, after I, alhamdulillah, I uh, I came back to to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. After I, I came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I I knew my aim, alhamdulillah, it was 1989, I decided to study uh, Islamic studies. Uh, plus, uh, when I was in the high school, uh, a very, very great uh, uh, and lovely person to me, it was Ustada uh, Ghada uh, Jarrar, the wife of Sheikh Bassam Jarrar. She she always telling me, she was always telling me that I am looking to you as a da'ya. So she encouraged me a lot to study and I, I always tell her that the hasanat is for you. Every hasana when I teach Quran, when I teach tafsir, when I uh, when I give any sanat, when I serve Islam in any way, it's it's your tribute. It's your hasanat. Um, Sister Karima, can you please mute your mic pl- microphone, please? You know, um, uh, that's all right. Um, so he- here's a- another question. Out of the professors, who was the most one, at least during your your undergrad years, during the your bachelor your baccalaure- baccalaureate, who was the most inspirational for you? Uh, is there any problem in the voice over? You can hear the voice over. Your voice is great. Your view is great. Everything's wonderful. You're okay, Samia. Inshallah. Um, you know, every professor taught me, even uh, during bachelor, during masters, during PhD, affected on my character and affected on, uh, affected on my way of thinking. Because you know. Everybody that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, 
has a lot of advantages and I, I believe that you can say 99 and 9% 100, 100 advantages and very, very few disadvantages. So I learned from the advantages and from the uh, abilities of everybody taught me. So I can't give you, uh, yani, I, can, I can't give you any name, but you know, um, I always uh, want to and uh, thank every every uh, professor uh, stood beside me and uh, appreciated my abilities and helped me to exceed my disabilities in order to do what I want. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So um, when we speak about the speaking about different challenges, are you right now living in Kenya or do you live in Jordan right now? I live in Jordan, you know, because it's. Yani it's easier for uh, visual impaired to, uh, yani to to yani to go around uh, to uh, in, you know a lot of uh, a lot of abilities and a lot of facilities that we can um, we can uh, ha- we can be, uh, we can get benefit from more than Kenya. So we are living now in Jordan. Uh, plus, yani the study of my husband, yani. I, we found that it's, I mean, and he can study Arabic and he can benefit from his studies. Well, I must admit, your English is outstanding, so I'm not sure if he taught you the English or you taught him the Arabic. Uh, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I love languages since I was young, but uh, because I studied in Arabic my uh, my studies, so, you know, the language disappeared. You feel that the language, uh, yeah, your language became weak, but... Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, I have a chance to be um, uh, to represent Palestine in uh, IBQ. It's International Braille Quran Union for Blind. It's in Turkey, so we have to be. We have to speak in English. We have to write emails in English. And Alhamdulillah, I'm from the board members now. So um, and plus, when I when I met my husband, Alhamdulillah, it. Uh, it, uh, it helped me to make my language alive again. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah yibarik fiki. Here's a question. What du'as do you do every day to, in, to help you? Dr. Uh, Sister Farhia, please mute yourself. Um, what are some of the du'as that you do every day? Sister Farhia, please mute yourself. Um, what du'as do you do every day to help you move forward? Yes. I always, uh, sister, uh, Dr. Aisha, I always say, Allahumma, urzuqni al-ikhlas, wa a'inni ala an akuna ahlan li atamatta al-lazati al-qabari ila wajhi al-kini. Say it again. Allahumma, urzuqni al-ikhlas. So let me translate that. Uh, uh, let me translate that. So, O oh Allah Almighty, grant me sincerity and make me live up to uh, what will grant me what, what will grant me uh, the highest level of Jannah. Is that what you were saying? And to, to, to see your face. To see your face. To yeah. see your face. To see your face. Mm-hmm. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Um, Dr. Samia, how how where did you travel to get the ilm? What were some of the areas? You mentioned Syria, you mentioned Jordan because you were in Palestine. You mentioned, did you go to Kenya too? Yes, I went to Kenya in order to visit my family, and my family in law there. You, you mean, and okay. I could, I could uh, make a lot of lectures there, especially in Mombasa, you know. Mombasa is a city in Kenya, it's on the Indian Ocean. Uh, and alhamdulillah, I could make some uh, activities there, uh, especially for the teachers of Quran uh, and uh, public lectures for uh, women. Alhamdulillah. For Masha, I went to Kenya three times. Was it nice? Did you like it? Yes, yes, yes. Alhamdulillah, very much. You know, uh, whenever you feel that uh, you you are delivering your thoughts. You are delivering your message. You will enjoy. So, um, where else did you travel for 
uh, for acquiring ilm. So I do, I do, I did actually put up a picture of you standing next to your to your husband, I believe, in on the equator, in I believe that's Kenya. At least it says Jumbo yes. Kenya. I put up the picture yes. up there. I do see you're standing in front of a flower store, and what it seems like that's in Turkey. Did you go to Turkey, Turkey. as well? Turkey. I loved uh, your Malaysia. I went to Malaysia. Malaysia, okay. Uh, but... It's not for sports, but you know, every everywhere you go, you get in. Everywhere you go, you improve your uh, um, your abilities. Everywhere you go, you feel that you learn a lot from people, from uh, from environment, from everything you face in the place that you travel to. Um, yani, my my journey to Malaysia was amazing. Was uh, was inspiring to me, you know, people uh, how, how people uh, uh, deal with us, and I, I visited some Islamic centers. Uh, I can't I can't forget my visit to Al Khalifa School in Kuala Lumpur and meeting those children and talking with them about Palestine, about Surah Al Duha, how Surah Al Duha uh, saved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, from uh, yeah, being wandering, from being orphaned, uh, f- and from yeah, f- from a lot of things, and made him special in every in every period till Qiyam Sah. So it was a very very nice meeting with them. They were inspiring to me a lot. I learned from any child that I met there. By the way, you guys, let me tell you one thing. She. She is not just saying that to be humble. She really is humble. When she says she learns from everybody, and when she speaks, if I can ask everybody to uh, mute themselves, please. Um, When she says that she was learning from everyone, she was talking to everyone, she really is like that. Even if it's a simple person that, you know, is probably learning the Fatiha, she'll spend time to learn and teach them and actually talk to them and have a conversation no matter how simple that person is and you will not even you will not even feel that she's creating any barrier instead she'll break every barrier and she'll talk to you like she had known you forever and ever and ever you know um uh, Imo Ibrahim, please mute, uh, mute yourself. Um, there, here's an, another thing where they're actually asking um, you to read Quran for them. But before before we read the Quran, I actually want to ask you: What is your daily routine as a student in the early years of this journey, and what is your daily routine now? Um, you know, um, yani, um, I depend on my uh, on my uh, on my uh, love to things. So I haven't uh, actually a daily routine. But alhamdulillah, I make my I make my adkar. Um, I I try to keep in touch with Quran every day. Alhamdulillah, since my early studies till now. Um, uh, yeah, in my early studies, I go to the university. Then uh, after university, I uh, used to go to uh, Al Masjid Al Aqsa in order to uh, live with the nature there. Uh, I love to stay there. Uh, Al Masjid Al Aqsa was inspiring to me a lot. Every place um, I try to listen for the mashayikh uh, that uh, give da'wah in Masjid Al-Aqsa, especially in Bab al-Rahma. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember uh, Brother Najah Kirat Abu Malik when he was giving lectures every Thursday. Right, every uh, Thursday, yep. Masha Allah, and I was, yani, I was fond of his uh, lectures, Masha Allah. Um, I try to, I, I try to sit with my friends and uh, Yani memorize Quran with them. I, yani, and now Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, since Fajr time, I make Iqra, uh, then I do my homeworks, uh, you know, cleaning, cooking, washing clothes, like this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Samia, you got to stop husband. right there. Samia, you cook. Yeah. You cook. This is new to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Wallah, everything. When you come, so I will cook for you. I, you know, when I called you, you were washing dishes. Yes. 
Mashallah. So you cook, you clean, you wash dishes. Alhamdulillah. I think the cooking part is really the, the, the one that surprised me the most. What kind of foods do you cook? Uh, you know, I cook Palestinian food like makluba. That's the most uh, important I, thing. Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and I make mahashi. You know, I can I can make mahashi. I can make molukhiya, uh, green beans, a lot of things. And when I got married, my husband, and you know, they got used for Indian food. So I learned how to cook Indian food, Indian food, uh, uh, chicken curry, minced curry, chicken pilau, um, uh, chicken masala. Yani all these things I made cutlass, it's the kubbet batata, sister Aish. It's like kubbet batata, but the ingredients are somehow different. So you're, you're different. talking about samosas, right? No, 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 not samosa. It's cutlass. Cutlass, okay. it's a potato. You make it like uh, balls and you, you put inside it meat and uh, coriander. Uh, and you like those, like, like those things and you fry it. You know what? I, I, I got to stay silent. I, I, this is beyond me, man. This this is beyond me. This is beyond me. If you, if you can actually cook all that, and it, it, this is beyond me. I'm sure it's beyond everybody else, too. <laughs> this is beyond me to actually get that far, mashallah. All right. Um, here, here's, an, here's a question. Do you have any advice for all of us um, on how we can get closer to the Qur'an, and especially for the non-Arabic speakers, what advice do you have for us? First of all, don't pressurize yourself. Uh, come to Quran when you are relaxed, when you are full of feelings towards Quran. Come to Quran in order to make yourself rest, in order to make yourself motivated, in order to make yourself in in high uh, high level of energy. Don't come to Quran. Um, what if they don't get that throughout the day and throughout uh, the week? Yes, yes. You know, يعني, يعني it's important to to know the meanings of Quran. It's important to to live with the Quran, uh, يعني, with your feelings, with your thoughts, with your spirit, uh, with your soul, with your body, your life. So if you don't love, you can't make. So love is your motivation to enter the yard of the Holy Quran. So how do they how do they get that love? How do they develop that love? Uh, if you love Allah and you want to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the way. Uh, there's a hadith from uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I think, or the, uh, some, uh, some ulama say it's an ather. If you want to talk to Allah, make dua. If you want Allah to talk to you, read the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you. So come to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way that um, make everybody loves to be with, the, with, with Quran all the time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to him. And he's talking to Allah. MashaAllah, you guys. If you're not I getting, I think uh, non-art speakers can can listen to Quran, can make a, you know, even if it's five minutes a day, they uh, you know, they can listen to uh, you know, surah by surah, ayah by ayah, and uh, try to look for the the basic meanings. It will help them to be close to Quran, inshallah. Masha'Allah, Masha'Allah. Um, Habibti, Dr. Samia, can you read us? The most ayat that are favorable to you, of course, all the Quran is favorable, but your favorable, most favorable ayat. And can you read it in Ashar Qiraat? In Ashar Qiraat, um, I will, I will try to, I will try to choose uh, uh, ayat that has Qiraat. Yani, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Ten times, but because, يعني, مثلا, يعني, maybe. Uh, um, Al-Kisai, Hamza, Khalaf, they are same, مثلا, in, in this, uh, I, will, I will try to read uh, the beginning of Surah Taha. Okay, um, let's do I that. Will start with, I will start with half San Asim. Okay. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Taha. 
ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يحشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى If you want to listen to it, Warsh uh, and Nafi. Oh, hey, man, 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 من خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى. If you want to listen it from حمزة الزيات for example with sect. طه ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقي لاحظوا لتشقى ورش لتشقى بما لا أن تقلي إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى طبعا خلف العاشر خلف عن حمزة سوري خلف إزراوي حمزة he reads without غنى with wow and yeah لمن يخشى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر ويخفى تسهيل الهمزة وقف الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسن For example, if you want to read it to أبو جعفر مثلا طاها ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى طبعا تنزيلا مما خلق يعني هو يعمل الإخفاء قبل الخاء مما خلق الأرض والسماوات ونوتس ذات طا ها ما ما أنزلنا يعني يسكت على فوا حروف الفواتح. For example, if you want to read it to Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, مثلاً, 
يعني يريد مثلا I, I will I will use the ayahs that have differences from Hafs um, ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى for example like this and I think that, that and I, مثلا for example يعقوب الله لا إله إلا هو for example له الأسماء الحسنى يعني those are some examples for the differences some differences in the words يعني مثلا for example uh, in سورة طه إذ, إذ قال لأهله انبثوا حمزة ريزك إذ قال لأهله هم بثوا so um hold on so dr samia I, so i'm going to what she's trying to do is explain to you what does it mean to actually have the variance in the different recitations now mind you is that these variants in the recitations were all at least the 10 uh, the 10 of them were actually read by the prophet Salem, so they are mutawatir they are actually collectively collectively um, passed on orally through different chains of narrations. And she's basically reading the different recitations, the different variants that were read by the Prophet ﷺ and passed on. No, most of us, most of us know Hafs an Aslam, and some, for especially North Africa, would know Warsh. But she's basically telling you, well, the different recitations, the different variants were actually there are other variants that were passed on. Some of the variants were in a specific, let's say, in a specific uh, uh, tone. Some of it was in a specific, uh, we'll call it the way you would recite a certain a certain pause, in, insert a certain pause, or sometimes. With, with a certain a simulation or sometimes with a certain no, nasal twain or sometimes with a certain um, with a certain um, you, you can have a certain vowel letter it would be given some some form some form of an inclination during the pronunciation so she would basically tell you in the 10 Qiraat in the in all the Quran where those 10 variants will be in where they are in and what the train of narration and based on that transmission so if you're struggling with one qira'a um you know this is this is an inspiration for us to actually learn it and see you know what i'm gonna dr samia harb has modern technology been a helpful tool for you personally in helping you you know because when you're talking about qira'at it definitely depends a lot on listening so did modern technology help you in catching those because it's going to be really hard to have a braille actually point out the variant qira'a of course of course of course uh, you know if i want to compare between my master's period and my phd period it was totally different alhamdulillah uh, I could get a device called Braille Sims. This device converts any book to Braille and I can read it during this jihaz, this device. Alhamdulillah. So I depend on al Nashr al Qiraat al Ashr, I depend on Ithaf Fudala al Bashar. I depend on Al-Budur Zahira. Al-Qur'an. So hold on, hold on, Dr. Samihar, because most people are not familiar with these books. So these books, you guys, are actually compiled poetry. So what they yes. do is that instead of actually reading and, let's say, putting the rules for the different qira'at and understanding the Qur'an, they form it in a poetry sense. So some of it is actually in a whole thousand senses. So they're, they would be compiled in poetry. So she would memorize the poetry over a thousand, all right, over a thousand, mm-hmm. sometimes sometimes, uh, t- sometimes a couple hundred um, uh, stanzas, and then she would memorize it to make it easy, ironically, to make it easy. And the reason why I say ironically, you would assume that yet it would be easier for you. Let me just get it. Let me just grasp it. Why do I have to make it the hard way? But I mean, guess what? It is actually 
easier to memorize it in stanzas in poetry than actually memorize those variants because you are most likely going to be forgetting those different areas. But if you memorize it like a song slash poem, then you'll be able to recognize those places. So she's basically talking about those stanzas. Those are actually books compiled of those poetries that have those rules that have those rules plus, uh, for them. Mm -hmm. Plus, Dr. Aisha, uh, the, some of those books that I mentioned explain the Qira'at and the Tahrirat of the Qira'at. And for example, it has Fudala al Bashar. Uh, this is a book that mentions the, um, the differences in Adad al Ayat from Matan Add al Kufi, Add al Madani, Add al Makki, and uh, he uh, uh, explains the differences in between the uh, the Osmanic script, script and the dictation, uh, the Arabic dictation. Uh, and he mentions the Qiraat for the Qurra, and he mentions all, all, also the meanings that. Um, that uh, uh, that is a result of this difference. And for example, nunshizuha, nunshiruha. What's the difference in the meaning between those two things? Ya'malun, ta'malun, for example, like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let, let me explain it to them because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm assuming that most people don't really understand um, qiraat and stuff, and then they start getting lost in all the jargon to them. So what she's basically saying is that these books they would go in detail for every single word, every single difference. And guess what? Sometimes it's not necessarily a word. Sometimes it could be just in a haraka. So it's, it could be in the fatha and the dhamma. And she's basically explaining how even the words, the letters, the haraka, each and every single one, you've got these books in where they're compiled to explain to you the meanings, to explain to you where they are located, and of course, even the numbering and all that. Now, here's the thing, is that the reason for all this, you want to keep in mind that the Quran was preserved in the sound in the harmony, in the way it was scripted, in the way that it was read, in each and every single meaning, every single letter, every single haraka, and even the sound even the sound and that's why when you look at for example wadduha and wadduha or wad and then she was giving you those pauses for example <laughs> exactly yeah. there you've got these different pauses these different inclinations in the way that you would actually read that's because the quran was actually preserved even in the sound of it and this is an example of how Ooh. intricate how intricate this pres preservation was actually transmitted and how intricate this preservation is in every single wording of that. Um, it, you know, here's a question somebody's asking. Um, how do you overcome depression and negative the negativities people say to you? I mean, Alhamdulillah, and you know, um, everybody faces uh, some depression in his life but alhamdulillah i try to exceed it uh, by helping مثلا, my, helping myself uh, changing my environment uh, مثلا, reading quran making sujood uh, going to visit my friends uh, making dua and uh, i advise anybody to leave the depression to leave the depression for a while in order not to put himself under or herself under any pressure. So, you know, you, you live the reality as it is and try to find the solution to yourself. You this live, I, do. I love it. Live the reality as it is and try to investigate and search for solutions. How do you overcome the negativities that people tell you? I'm sure somebody, you know, might have... I'm sure, you know, especially in, you know, sorry, you guys, please don't be hurt, but this is real. In some countries, you will have people that don't really care about people's um, about people's feelings, and they can say very hurtful comments. And I'm sure you have heard that many, many, many times mm -hmm. in where people would tell you you're not going to be able to do it, give up, and many hurtful comments. How do you overcome that? Uh, for myself, you know, um, I don't care. 
I don't care. Has I have I have my self confident. Alhamdulillah. I mean, I'm confident on myself. Alhamdulillah. And I know that I can do. So, I mean, I mean, I try to discuss with them why you, I mean, give me a chance, for example, Matanam. And sometimes I, when I, when I started the TS teaching, when I started started working, they didn't accept me as a blind person easily. But Alhamdulillah, I mean, by patience, by uh, by trying to by trying to open the door for everybody, and trying to trying to uh, you know, sometimes I go to the mosque in order to give the lecture. Nobody comes. I I go back home without giving anything. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and, and I didn't give up. I I try once, twice, a lot of times in order to do what I want. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Dr. Samia Harb. Anything you would like, anything else you would like to tell us. And for those that would like to ask questions, you'd like to unmute yourself. I don't want to take over the discussion. If you want to say anything or ask you a question, um, go ahead, unmute yourself or raise your hand and unmute yourself. So uh, people, you know, are, are actually seeing that you're um, in line. So if you would like to unmute yourself and actually ask a question directly, go ahead. You are talking with 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 the audience. Yeah, I'm talking with the audience, the beautiful yes. audience that I'm sure they are amazed to actually listen to you doing this. And I wished that they. I wished. Uh, go ahead, Sister Aisha. Go ahead. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. to for the advice that you've given. Um, I just have one quick question. Um, please, have you got any can, advice? Can you can you can you speak slower, please? Oh, sorry. Um, any advice on consistency with memorizing Quran, please, and just with Quran in general, consistency? Sister Aisha, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get the question well. Okay. Because the voice is not clear. Right. So she was talking about how to be consistent in memorizing the Quran. Um, I told you that love Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the mutakallim of this Quran. Uh, will, will, motiva will motivate you to be consistent. Plus, um, if you feel yourself uh, in futur, in, yeah, you can't do this. Right. So take a vacation and come back. So whenever you lose interest, she's basically telling you to take, take a vacation. So what does that mean? Book a flight and, and go somewhere? Book a flight and go to uh, in, inside yourself inside your society, inside your mood, then say to yourself, I finished my uh, my vacation, I will come back to Quran uh, um, in a good mood. I love it. So you're booking a flight not to fly somewhere, you're taking a flight inside yourself to get out of that mood and then come back to it. Love it. Lo you guys... And oh don't my feel you're, yourself guilty because... You haven't a mood to to memorize. Don't feel yourself guilty because you can't memorize. Don't feel yourself guilty because you feel that yourself preventing you, your mood preventing you from uh, going ahead. So uh, have a rest, then come back. You will feel yourself energetic. You know, Doctor Samia Harb, I can't but feel guilty um, listening to how far you have went. And with all the different things, I can't, uh, I can't, I can't help but feel guilty and feeling that I am guilty of not getting to where you're at. So this is a positive, hopefully, inshallah, a positive uh, guilty feeling. Is, it, is there a positive guilty feeling? I think inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> all right, we've got Asma Mansoor. Asma, we got to give that girl the space. Go ahead, Asma. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. So my question is, um, do you have any practical advice for Arabs that are brought up in the West um, that want to study the Quran and Arabic, so the Islamic sciences, but they feel their Arabi is too weak, but they feel the programs in the West cater more to non-Arabs um, when learning Arabic and things like that. So do you have any advice? Any advice when if you want to learn Arabic and Quran? So yes, but, but this is what you want. 
so uh, uh, Smith, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Samuel, what she's talking about are basically the the Arabs that were brought up in the West. So in the West yes. and their Arabi is not necessarily at the highest level, but um, and also the different Islamic studies programs are actually taught in 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 English or in different languages, not in yes. Arabi. So she's wondering what advice do you give um, for um, for those uh, students? Uh, first of all, uh, Alhamdulillah, um, the internet websites uh, are a lot. And uh, yani, teaching online is uh, provided, Alhamdulillah, from the East. Uh, you can join, join uh, those groups. And I know a lot of people in, in um, several places in US, for example, in uh, UK, they study Quran, they study Arabic online from uh, professors in Palestine, in Jordan, in Egypt, and so on. This will help. And try to listen to the medias, to the media, especially this media that um, give a, a Yani, um, yani, uh, uh, an idea about the basics of Arabic language, for example, and try to listen to the Quran, to listen to the Quran and imitate what you are listening in the accent. It will help you, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah. If... And alhamdulillah, it became easy to find the teacher to you. Alhamdulillah, Allah yibarak fiku. If anybody else has a question, um, go, Rubaiya, go ahead, Rubaiya. Assalamu alaikum. Um, advice for someone like myself I'm over 40 years old I have children I have a busy household should I should I focus on my children more and less on myself and my learning how do I balance that if I very, really... nice. very nice you know um, uh, uh, life is, is priorities so if you uh, you have to you have to arrange your priorities and even Islam didn't didn't tell us that uh, you know, ignore your children and go to to have ilm. and also Islam didn't tell us that don't have a ilm and give all of your time to your house. Try to make balance. Uh, for example, as I as I tell uh, as I tell you as I told you, alhamdulillah, uh, during uh, the the internet, during the medias, you can you can alhamdulillah get uh, information, uh, and yeah, you can you can go to the basics of Islam. Uh, this will not prevent you from your family, from your children. Alhamdulillah, uh, teaching your children is a way to teach yourself. So uh, to find um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, sharing dots or sharing uh, uh, ideas between you and your children, when you educate them, you, you will learn yourself, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. So for example, if I want to memorize Quran, when I help my, my children to memorize Quran, I will. If I want to learn matan fiqh, I can uh, I can have, for five minutes to listen about uh, uh, a YouTube, for about uh, learning salah, <coughs> and I learn them salah in uh, uh, how Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our prophet, was praying. For example, <coughs> so you can you can steal five minutes every day and give yourself ilm and uh, give, deliver this ilm to your children. You will not lose the relationship between you and your duties <coughs> towards your children. Uh, plus, alhamdulillah, you will take care of yourself. Because, you know, ilm is mutah. Ilm is available for everybody. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't pressurize us to get all the ilm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't force us to memorize, to memorize Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to learn the basics or the things that make us close to him, alhamdulillah. When, when a person came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and said, if I prayed my food and I fasted, I do my zakah, I did my pilgrimage, and I said from my heart, from my soul, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, uh, will I go to Jannah? He said, yes, you'll go to Jannah if you did this. So alhamdulillah, the way is very easy. And the balance is very easy. 
if you make dua for yourself and if you don't pressurize yourself in a side against a side i don't know if i could explain um you did an awesome job mashallah if i just so because of the just for the sake of time if there's a another question that somebody else would like to ask so go ahead unmute yourself and go ahead and ask the question so we can inshallah um i guess wrap up and give the time for dr sam you have to take her rest as well and jazakumullah khair on everyone so if there's a last question go ahead and unmute yourself All right, I I guess no other questions. Um, can I, Asma, can I, can I ask the last question? Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. It's all yours. Okay. How, how much time would you say we need to spend if we seriously want to study the Quran uh, or, or the Deen? How much time in the day? We have 24 hours. How much of that should we dedicate to studying? I, I want to be, I want to be, uh, I want to be honest with you, you know? Uh, I'm a moody person and I depend on my mood. Sometimes on the day I don't do anything because I feel I feel tired. I feel that my heart is not there. Sometimes I memorize one just in a week. One just took me two days to memorize. So it depends on, on my hymn. But um, yani, uh, this, is, this doesn't mean that if you can um, if you can't make a system to your life, I think it, you, you can get benefit from five minutes per day. But for myself, and I, I, this, this is, and I, I admit, this is my disadvantage that I don't come to anything unless I am full of love, full of energy, full of desire to come to it. So my desire and energy uh, motivates me. Well, Dr. Samia, clearly you have a lot of energy and a lot of desire that is uh, that has gotten you that far. But I think we really need to work on the desire and the energy. We all do. I'm number one guilty of that. <laughs> all right. Dua is the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So clearly you have a lot of him and you have a lot of energy and that's or else you wouldn't have gotten this far. <laughs> Right? I'm sure everybody agrees with me. Um, uh, Jazakumullah khairan, everyone for attending. Um, and barakallahu fikum. Um, this was Dr. Samia Harb. Allah yahfadha ya rabbi. And Allah yabarak fikum, everyone for attending. Somebody very inspirational. We should all learn from this, despite the challenges. And no matter what the obstacles are, there's always a way to go beyond because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words are actually those words to give you the motivation to move forward, to go beyond, and go beyond to reach the top. And there's nothing more inspirational than the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. And there's nothing, no higher and a better science to learn than Islam and then Quran because it will inspire you from within and definitely elevate you on all ends and give you the highest levels and the highest uh, levels of principles and highest levels of everything. Um, and so here they're asking me to ask you, could you do classes with Gems of Light? Um, inshallah later on, because you know now my program is very, very, very busy. Inshallah, I will. Inshallah, it's, it's my pleasure. Wallah. Inshallah, inshallah. We'll arrange it, inshallah, in the soon future, in the nearest future. Nearest future, inshallah. inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Dr. Samia Harb, anything else you want to tell us before we let you go and rest? Uh, first of all, really, you, everybody from you was inspiring to me, inshallah, to go ahead in serving the Holy Quran and teaching. I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, give me a life to serve everybody wants to learn Quran, Tafsir. Uh, if you want, uh, if uh, if anybody can uh, can understand Arabic, I have uh, a lecture of Tafsir. We started from Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Fatiha, and we almost we we all, we are almost about to finish Surah Al-Baqarah. It's a discussion in Tafsir every Tuesday, 4:30 in uh, Florida time. 
430. Mm -hmm. So uh, if anybody wants to join us, I can send the uh, Zoom link to Sister Aisha and uh, um, most welcome for everybody. Uh, I try to make my language easy, inshallah. And inshallah, inshallah, you will benefit from tafsir. Um, and if I can, inshallah, as I told you, I will make a class uh, if uh, if you want, inshallah. Inshallah, do you have an Instagram? How can people follow you? Um, you know, I have a Facebook. My name is Sami Ahid on Arabic. And uh, my, uh, my lectures in tafsir, I have a, a Telegram channel. Inshallah, I will send you the link of it. I think uh, your mother has the link. I think I don't. I'm not sure. All right. Well, well, inshallah, we we will check it out, and I will actually put it up there. So I'm going to put up your profile so they can see it. All right. So I'm going to put up the profile up there so everybody else can see it. And inshallah, oh no, I actually put it up and then I I I closed it. But yeah, we'll put it up there inshallah so everybody can see it. Anything else you would like to add, Doctor Samia? Jazakum Allahu Khairan for this uh, invitation. I'm very, very happy to meet you, Dr. Aisha. I love you, really. And uh, I, I hope that we will meet in Al Masjid Al Aqsa Qariban, inshallah. Uh, I'm sorry for my uh, weak English. I tried to express myself in English, but I'm sorry because, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't oh, practice it a lot in order to be. Florentine. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear in any point. You were actually doing an outstanding job, I must admit. I'm sure you far exceeded my expectation, I must admit. So, um, mashallah aliki rabbi yahfadik. This is her... Um, this is her Facebook, so you guys can follow her on her Facebook. You could see she, you can even add her as a friend, and I'm sure you know you could you could see some of the different things that she does. I will also include later on uh, include the link for her, uh, I guess the Quran classes that she's offering, and also the timing. Um, so please join her classes if you speak Arabic, and hopefully um, in the near future she will be doing some classes in English as well well um so stick with her and invite her to your events because she's definitely an inspiration and if you get to even bring her and invite her to your islamic uh, to your islamic organization center whatever it is in your country do so in person is even a lot more inspiring than on facebook or on zoom this woman is somebody that we could all learn from. Jazakallah khairan, Dr. Samia, and Jazakallah khairan, everyone for attending. Rabbi yahfad kuyo. Have a very nice time. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.